Before I get into the topic, I need to clarify that this video is not about me dumping on the show, theorizing, and so on, but it's more about managing expectations for the people that have played the game, because there's one inherent flaw in adapting The Last of Us for anything other than a video game that has remained unaddressed, but will have a massive impact on your perception of the experience the show is adapting. My mask broke. Don't, don't leave me to turn. <coughs> Please. What do you want to do? This will be a spoiler-free video, but I will show a few scenes from the game's first few hours to make my points. So if you haven't played the game and are looking forward to HBO's adaptation, you can and should continue watching, as it might be helpful for you too. And on that note, do avoid the marketing and behind-the-scenes material for it, as HBO has been spoiling some pretty important narrative moments in those. With that said, let's nerd out about this one. Well, The Last of Us has been lauded for its incredible story and performances, and has therefore been considered a prime example of cinematic storytelling that can be translated perfectly onto the screen. The critical driving factor that made the game such an incredible of an experience to begin with wasn't actually its story. What are you doing? Killing time. Well, what am I supposed to do? I am sure you will figure that out. Your watch is broken. And while some of you might be yelling sacrilege right now, please lean back a second and think about what made the game so incredible to you from an emotional perspective. You mumble in your sleep. I hate bad dreams. Yeah, me too. Most of you probably consider the bond you developed with Joel and Allie and how deeply you've come to care for these two to be the most memorable part of it. And it's easy to point at the story and Ashley Johnson's and Troy Baker's performances for this. Just a little side note, it's fantastic that they're both in the show as well, but I hope their presence won't be too distracting. Anyway, while the story and writing are incredibly nuanced and mature, and the performances are second to none, The Last of Us's most significant achievement is how it manages to create a bond with a player more than anything else. So is that everything you hoped for? Jury's still out. But man, can't deny that view. You see, throughout The Last of Us, you play three different characters, Joel, Ellie, and the third one I won't get into. The switch between these characters isn't just for gameplay and variety reasons, but also to communicate the different kinds and levels of abilities these characters have, and the intensity and harshness and hardness of surviving and perceiving this very broken world. If you're just a kid like Ellie. You hear that? Yeah. Oh shit, you're gonna go in there? I wanna see what we can find. You're gonna find my body when I die from a heart attack. Don't worry, I got this. And while she does an incredible job for a kid, it makes you understand through gameplay that you as Joel are the physically stronger character responsible for taking care of Ellie and helping her evolve into a person that can survive this world on her own if need be. This isn't conveyed to you by words or imagery, but you experience it through your own actions and how you interact with the world. This is also why playing through the game at a higher difficulty can surprisingly amplify the emotional experience. And throughout the game, Ellie supports you, turning this into a codependent exchange more than a passive endeavor. I'm not family. No. Your cargo. And at some point in the game, there comes a moment where Alice's actions lead to her not being cargo anymore, but a character you care for because you've been aiding each other while also being physically aware of how tough it has to be for each of these characters to survive this journey you have been on. And not only physically, but mentally as well, because you experience the backstories through gameplay too. The important thing here is that you are actively doing these things yourself. <laughs> Fireflies. I mean, real fireflies. Yeah, I see that. Sorry, I lost myself for a sec.
While the story and its events are linear, you are still taking action. Since you play the characters and the interactions between them, you understand the weight of those actions and decisions perfectly, which is why such a powerful bond is created, not only between Joel and Ali, but because you are actively driving the actions to you as well. Especially as there are some moments in the game where the characters you are playing cannot defend oneself, which creates a level of physical awareness of the physically and mentally codependent relationship this has become. Okay, Joel, you take point. I'll watch the video. Ellie, no matter what, you stay right on his heels. Sure. You stay sharp. I got it. The thing that elevates this to an entirely new level, and why The Last of Us Part 2, while a fantastic game, didn't live up to the original, is that after Joel and you, the player, have reached this point of the emotional journey, every single action you take in the game, you take because you want to support the other character. And every time Joel or Ellie dies in gameplay, it's not them that has failed, it is you that has failed them. Are you alright? I'm trying to learn how to whistle. You don't know how to whistle. Well, does it sound like I know how to whistle? The most brilliant aspect of The Last of Us is not the gameplay or the story, but how it uses its gameplay elements to unfold its story in such a way that it hands over the responsibility of survival to the player and then shifts those elements around to develop, amplify, and communicate this codependent relationship between Ali and Joel. Ali, come on. <laughs> God damn it, Bill! What just happened? Another one of Bill's stupid traps! Aided with pitch-perfect performances, it creates an exchange and dynamism between the characters that makes you deliberately and purposefully take over the responsibility for the actions taken in the game. There's a reason why people have been discussing for close to a decade whether what happens at the end is morally right, but not many have been discussing whether they would have done it any differently. Hey, look. <laughs> gnomes. Yeah, those are gnomes. Man, I had an art book filled with these. I always thought they were super cute. <laughs> Not fairies, though. They creep me out. And no matter how good a show or movie is, due to their very passive nature, not all of these elements can be compensated. There simply isn't a way to simulate the interactive nature responsible for the intense bond you create with these characters. But again, that doesn't mean that the show won't and can't be good. And the same thing would apply to not only this, but every possible cinematic adaptation. Even if they had gone ahead and just 3D rendered the game's cinematics to perfection with the original cast and turned that into a movie or show, the lack of this fundamental pillar of interaction would still be missing, which is one of the key factors that, for many, turned The Last of Us into an experience of a lifetime. If you haven't played the game and want to experience the story, especially since the brilliant remaster has been released by now, in that case, you're drastically better off playing the game as much of what makes it so great is that you're actively experiencing it together with Ali and Joel and the humanity it's filled with, which is what made The Last of Us such an incredible experience to begin with. But if you already have, when you watch this show, and yes, I will do so as well and review it on its own merits without much comparing it to the game, try to do the same thing and see this as an adaptation for an audience that never had the chance to experience the game and not as a replacement or narrative betterment of the original because of that it simply cannot do. But that's it from me. I'll head back to finish the game for the sixth time now before the show comes on next week. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for the review. And if you enjoyed this insight, you may like this one as well. And I will see you in the next one.